Yeah, hi guys, welcome to the present session. So I hope my audio and video both these two are uh, clear. Okay. So in this video, we are going to see the few previous year questions. Okay. So as a 15 minute session, we will see the two questions. Okay. So before starting the se session, here one announcement is that Myself, I am Ashwini Kumar. I am the educator of the electronic science as well as the uh, general paper one that is the teaching and uh, research aptitude. Okay, and the coming to the electronic science course, the complete course for the electronic science for the new batch is going to start from February onwards, guys. The new batch for the electronic science candidates is going to start from February onwards. So the interested candidates may take the subscription plan, right? So here the different plans are mentioned here. One month, three months, six months, 12 months and 24 months. Okay, so you may take any one of the subscription plan uh, based upon when you are planning to write the exam. Okay, and if you want to get the 10% discount on any one of the subscription plan, then use my referral code that is E-A-S-W-I-E-M-I-K-L-I-V-E. K Ashwini K Live. Okay. Yes, W I N I K L I V. So use this referral code, guys, then you will get the 10% discount on any one of the subscription plan. Okay, so there are no spaces here. And it is a case insensitive, so you may use the small letters or you may use the capital letters. No problem. Fine. So we will start the session, guys. <coughs> So first we will start the Thevenin's theorem, okay, which is very most uh, important concept as per our UGC net exam. Okay, the candidates who are watching this video, just say hello guys, <laughs> so that I come to know that who are watching this one. <coughs> so we have to find out the Thevenin's equivalent circuit of this one across this point okay Thevenin's equivalent circuit of this one across this point that means let's take it is a node a and let's take it is a node b okay so in between both these two nodes we have to find out the Thevenin's equivalent circuit okay guys? <coughs> so let's start so first of all at which points they are asking the equal Thevenin's equivalent circuit so first of all open that one that means open this four works so if I open this four ohms, then the remaining circuit uh, looks like this. So it is the two ohms, and it is the ten ohms, and it is the six ohms, and here the supply is connected. It is the sixteen volts. Okay. So we will get the circuit like this. And here I open circuited the load resistance that is A and B in between both these two. So now we have to find out the equivalent circuit. So Thevenin's equivalent circuit means we have to find out the single voltage source and the single resistance. That means how big the circuit it might be, it's not a matter to us. So even though if it is having the hundred number of resistors, it is having the hundred number of uh, uh, independent voltage sources or the current sources but finally our task is to convert that huge circuit or the big circuit into the circuit which is having one and only one voltage source and one and only one resistance and whatever the one and only one voltage source we are representing that is called as a Thevenin's uh, voltage source and one and only one resistance we are using that is called as a Thevenin's resistance fine so it is the concept of the Thevenin's okay and we can apply the Thevenin's equivalent uh, circuit or the Thevenin's theorem only to the linear networks. Okay, only to the linear net networks means whatever the resistors, inductors, and capacitors, all these three comes under the linear devices. Okay, for such devices, we are going to apply. If in case, if you want to apply the Thevenin's theorem to the non-linear devices, just like the diodes and the transistors like that, then what we have to do is that first convert the non-linear devices into equivalent linear devices. That means if you take the diode, basically the diode is a non-linear device case. Okay, But there is one equivalent circuit to the diode which is having the uh, linear elements with some voltage source. 
Similarly, if you're taking the BJT, actually BJT is a non-linear device. But we can take the equivalent circuit of the BJT. The equivalent circuit includes the uh, linear uh, devices with some uh, voltage source. Okay. So, or some capacitance, junction capacitance will be there like that. Fine. So, if you want to apply the Thevenin's theorem to the non-linear devices, then first convert the non-linear device into the equivalent uh, circuit and then start applying the Thevenin's concept. Did you understand it? So, it is a way of solving it. Okay, fine. Here we are having one simple circuit. So, so first, uh, let us discuss about this uh, circuit, how to uh, convert this circuit into the Thevenin's uh, equivalent circuit. Fine. So, here I removed this one. So, at which nodes they are asking to find out the equivalent circuit. In between both these two nodes, whatever the device is there, first remove the device. Okay, remove the device and then draw the circuit. Fine. So, now my task is to find out the voltage across both these two. If I find out the voltage across the node A and the node B, that is called as my Thevenin's voltage or else open circuit voltage or else voltage between the node A and node B. Okay. And similarly, if I can able to find out the resistance between the nodes A and B, okay, that is R suffix AB and we can also call this one as a RTH, that is nothing but a Thevenin's resistance. Okay, we will discuss, I mean, we will uh, calculate about the VTH, okay. So, the first, if I am taking the current, current flowing from the 16 volts, okay, let us take it is the I, okay, current flowing from the 16 volts is the I, okay, and this I is, after approaching this node, okay, after approaching this node, this I will be divided into the, let us take I1, and I2. Okay, let us take I1 and I2. So now, what is the I2 value, guys? What is the <coughs> value of the I2? Anybody? What is the value of the I2? That is the current flowing through the 10 ohms. So, anybody, please? The current flowing through the I2 is 0, okay, 0 amperes. Why? Because it is the open circuited and the current will not flow in the open circuited path. Clear? So that's why the current flowing through the 10 ohms can be taken as a 0. And now, if, if the current flowing through the 10 ohms is 0, then the voltage drop across this 10 ohms can be taken as V is equal to current flowing through the 10 ohms into resistance. What is the current flowing through the 10 ohms, guys? 0. 0 is the current flowing through the 10 ohms, then I will get as a 0. That means the voltage drop across this 10 ohms becomes is equal to 0. If the voltage drop across this one is 0, then whatever the voltage here is there, the same voltage will be maintained here and here. And now VAV or the VTH or the open circuit voltage is nothing but the voltage drop across the 6 ohms. Okay. The voltage drop across the 6 ohms can be taken as a VAV. Fine. And now, let us calculate the voltage across the 6 ohm phase. And now, in which resistor the current is not flowing, you need not to include that resistance in your calculation part. I hope you understand. Okay. W whatever the resistance, the current is not flowing through that one, you need not to include that one in our analysis part. Okay. So, I removed the 10 ohms resistance. Now, I got only the single loop and the current flowing through this one. Let us take I is the current flowing through this one. Okay, and this I becomes is equal to what guys? 16 divided by 2 plus 6. 2 plus 6 becomes is equal to 8. Then that becomes is equal to 2 amperes. Okay, now in this loop, the current flowing is a 2 amperes. So if the current flowing is a 2 amperes, then in, in the 2 ohms, the current 2 amperes is flowing. In the 6 ohms also, the current 2 amperes is flowing. So now the voltage drop across the 6 ohms that can be taken as the amount of current flowing through that one into the resistance, that is 12 volts, right? That is the 12 volts drop is happening across this uh, 6 volts, which is nothing but a VAB or a V6 or the VOC or the VTH. So finally, I got the VTH as a 12 volts, right? I got the VTH as a 12 volts. So now we have to calculate the RTH, okay? So to calculate the Thevenin's resistance, here we have to follow certain uh, rules, guys. Okay, so what is that one means? I will explain. So just carefully listen, guys. Yeah. <coughs> so.
So at this point, we have to find out the RTH. That means uh, remove this one. So just remove this resistance. And in this direction, I have to find out the Thevenin's resistance. And now, whatever the sources are there, that means in our circuit, whether it is a voltage source or the current source, whatever the sources are there, we have to neglect that one. I mean, that effect has to be making as a zero. That means if you want to voltage source effect as a zero, then what we have to do? We have to short circuit the voltage source. Okay. And if you want to deactivate the current sources, then what we have to do? Deactivate the current source means we have to open circuit the current sources. Fine. So that's what we can do. And now here the voltage source is there. So to find out the Thevenin's resistance, all the independent sources has to be deactivated. So here the voltage source is there. So to deactivate that one, what I have to do? I have to short circuit this. Fine, guys. So if once I short circuit, then what will happen, guys? You may check down here 2 and 6. Okay, 2 and 6. Both these two comes in parallel, right? Okay, 2 and 6, both these two comes in parallel. Then 2 parallel with 6 can be taken as 12 divided by 8. Okay, that means 3 divided by 2. That is 1.5. Okay, let it be 3 divided by 2. And now the, the parallel equivalent impedance of both these two comes in series with this 10. That means I got as a 1.5, 1.5 is the parallel impedance of both these two and the series with the 10 means I will get as 11.5 ohms, right? So finally, I got the RTH as a 11.5 ohms. Is that clear, guys? So we got the RTH as well as we got the VTH, yeah. So we got both these two. VTH is a 12 volts and RTH is a 11.5 ohms. So now, whatever the circuit mentioned here, okay, this circuit can be represented with a single voltage source and a single resistance so that we can be shown as like this guys so we can shown as like this single voltage source which is nothing but VTH I got as a 12 volts and a single uh, resistance that is RTH I got as 11.5 volts it is the RTH okay and I actually, I removed this load, right? Now, I have to connect this load. Finally, I have to connect the removed load in between the A and E. Okay. So, it is a Thevenin's equivalent circuit. Did you understand, guys? It is a way you have to find out the Thevenin's equivalent circuit for the uh, given uh, circuit. Right? So, if, if we are having the circuit with the independent as well as the dependent sources also, then the little bit change we can able to do okay, that you can check in my previous uh, special class also okay, as I already shown you and uh, with the one more question uh, I will uh, end this uh, session guys <coughs> see so here the klystron transfer electron devices misfit and the traveling wave tubes okay so somehow all these things are related to the microwave uh, generators okay so klystron the reflex klystron works based upon the bunching of the electrons okay reflex klystron works based upon the bunching of the electrons so a goes to 2 so out of all the options here a is going to 2 only the first option okay we will see remaining also transfer electron devices okay transfer electronic devices are having the warm electrons right and next misfit the misfits are work out with the pinch of voltage generally if you can check the fits okay um, i mean uh, junction field effect transistors or such type of misfits okay you may find out the pinch after crossing the pinch of voltage then the current will be almost independent upon the vds right? so the pinch off is related to the misfit and the traveling wave tube is nothing but a slow structure okay the traveling wave tube will be having the slow wave structure will be there so which is helical in shape okay and whatever the signal you are passing here Okay, that signal, okay, let's take it is the input signal and it is the output signal. So, whatever the signal we are passing here at one end of the slow wave structure, so coming to this one, the signal will be amplified. Okay, the signal will be amplified and the speed, the speed or the velocity of the signal will be reduces. Did you understand this? The speed or velocity of the signal will be reduces and the amplification will take place. Okay, both these two happens in the case of the 
flow wave structure that happens in the traveling wave. So, based upon that one, here the first option is the correct. Right? So, I hope all of you are understand. So, for more uh, what we call uh, more free classes, okay, uh, you may visit my profile link that is kept in the description box of this video. So, once click on my profile link and then click on the follow button. Okay, then you will come to know all my upcoming uh, schedules regarding the free uh, live classes of the electronic science as well as the paper one. Okay, so the candidates who wants to get the complete course for the UGS net electronic science, okay, the complete course is going to start from Feb onwards, guys. So all the interested candidates take the subscription plan. So here the different subscription plans are mentioned <coughs> on your screen. So based upon your exam, okay, when you are planning to write the exam, based upon that one, you may take any one of the subscription plan here. Okay, and you use my referral code that is A S W I N I K L I V E. Use my referral code, okay, to get the ten percent discount on any one of the subscription plan. Okay, okay, guys, thank you very much, and we will meet in the next session, guys. Okay, bye. -bye.